Well, it is 504. I'd like to welcome you all to the City of Bloomington Redevelopment Commission meeting of August 5th, 2024. Uh, if we could start the meeting with a roll call, please. Steve Scambleri here. Randy Cassidy here. John West here. Deborah Meyerson here. And staff present, please. Larry Allen Legal. Anna Hansen Hand. Jane Cooperman, Economic and Sustainable Development. Jessica McClellan, City Controller. Roy Aiken with City Engineering. Thank you. Um, Would you like us to speak? Yeah, Roy, you, you, yeah. you are city staff, staff correct? Yeah. <laughs> Senior Network Administrator, Rob Crow. Assistant ITS Director, Mike Crow. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Appreciate Welcome. having all Welcome. accounted for. Do it. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Um, we will go to a reading of, of the minutes of July 15th, 2024. Um, if I could have any questions or comments from commissioners on those minutes, if not, I'll entertain a motion. No nope. questions, I'll move approval of minutes for July 15th, 2024. Second. Uh, first and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Passes unanimously. Uh, next on our agenda, we have the examination of claims from August 2nd, 2024 for $1,298,324.40. Um, and any questions or comments from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mm. Three, three little quick questions. One on 151600 on the AT&T mobility cell phone charges. Is that just for the staff while we're out? And it, applies into just the general consolidated tip it's a um it's actually from your funds yeah oh. so that that comes from our title 16 funds it looks okay. like um and that is just um a change in the service i believe essentially we have received new ipads um ah. yeah for our inspectors, and that was part of it. But, but it didn't come out of the TIF, though, right? No. No, no. that's why I wanted to ask and verify, so not out of the TIF. And then, uh, real quickly, in regards to our 444 account, and uh, da, 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 let me look here just to make sure. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, account 4320 on the 15, 15, well, 15 or 150,000 on the account 43220 just for the refund for showers. That was just an overpayment or? For the, the lease payment, is yes. that what you refer to? Yeah, that was an overpayment. There was a duplicate payment that was submitted by uh, BBR. Okay. And then the only other question is the one with Marshall Security. And while I'm not questioning the cost, I'm at just asking if we could look and know when our contract will run out with them for the Hopewell so that we're aware of what the time frame is. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions yeah. or comments? Page three of five among the claims register is very first couple items, the um, escrow payments for the trades tech center. Are, are those tied to a particular project within the tech center? Or they? The tech center itself, that's the project. So they are it's part of the construction of the, the tech center. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's the, uh, the literally the what's being taken from the payment, uh, whatever's outstanding from the contractor, that's what's getting diverted to the escrow account. Got it. Okay. Thank you. If there are any other questions or comments, otherwise I will take uh, a motion. I'll uh, move approval of the claims register for August 2nd, 2024. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, next item on our agenda is the payroll register uh, from July 26, 2024 for $41,088.87. Any comments or questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as uh, presented. Second. second. First and two seconds. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. We'll move to the report of officers and committees. Um, we have a director's report, please. Sure. Um, so I have a few things to report upon. 
Um, first of all, neighborhood improvement grants, additional funding was made available um, for the neighborhood improvement grants, so additional funds were allocated amongst the projects. There was an amendment to the Park Ridge East neighborhood improvement, um, and so you might recall that in April, of, uh, April 22nd of this year, uh, you guys voted to approve 8,500 in neighborhood improvement grant funds to the Park Ridge East Neighborhood Association for their traffic median green project. This amount is $4,325 less than the Neighborhood Association had requested to fully fund their project. Um, during that meeting, there was some discussion of a plan to fully fund the project should additional funds become available. And it was documented in a CATS recording around the 43 minute mark interested. So additional funding has now been identified. Therefore, HAND is increasing the grant by an additional $4,325 for a total budget amount of $12,825. Um, in addition, other activities right now, um, entitled commit communities are required to develop a five-year plan to assess affordable housing and community development needs and market conditions to make data-driven place-based investment decisions. We are currently in the process of developing this five-year plan. Um, and outreach is going to be occurring later this month. So we would really like public participation, if at all possible. Um, there is a place on our website that lists all of the dates. There's a variety of formats, um, virtual, in-person, um, but topics range from affordable housing, fair housing, neighborhood preservation, services to need and improve economic self-sufficiency amongst lower income residents, public infrastructure and facility improvements. So um, please keep an eye out for those dates. We really would like to have some participation. Um, in addition, um, I wanted to let you know that Heading Home is hosting an inspection palooza um, on September 18th from 11 to 1230. Um, they are trying to engage landlords and property managers to see um, inspections from a variety of different viewpoints, including our hand inspectors. And speaking of hand inspectors, eight members of our staff, including myself, have recently become INSPIRE certified inspectors, and that is national standards of the physical inspection of real estate. So that was an accomplishment um, that we took care of this month. But other than that, that concludes my director's report. Great. Congratulations to the staff. Yeah, good job on that. Well, quick question, Anna, where we came up with the additional money for them, did that just come from other grants that didn't? participate or weren't going to um, participate? It actually came from a different budget line that was identified but unknown of at the time of allocation. So it was a local line okay. that did not come out of TIF. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next, we have a legal report. Anything uh, No share? report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Commissioner. Thank you. Um, a treasurer's report? No report, but I can answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, business development update? No report. Thank you. Okay. And hope well. I think Deb comes is with us. Yeah. Right here. Great. So um, just a quick update on the development. You know, we've been talking about prepping for the public offering for the Hopewell South, continued uh, development of that. So we had a great meeting with you three this week and they are putting some finishing touches. I don't know, is would you like to just touch on timing or any other information, Larry, um, to bring to the public offering for ourselves? Uh, not at this time, Deb. We've, we've discussed okay. it. Okay, great. So just know it's continues to be in progress uh, and uh, focus on uh, trying to look at uh, making sure that we've got uh, moving those development opportunities forward. So that's it today. Great. Thank you. Uh, so next item on our agenda, we've got new business. Um, and we have resolution 24-55 approval of hardware uh, of an agreement with presidio for hopewell phase one east hardware and camera installation hello roy Aiton with the uh, city engineering department so a uh, portion of our uh, hopewell east infrastructure part project was to install the conduits and everything to get us ready to have a wireless access point and cameras that will go into the hopewell common park it through there. That's in the infrastructure project. What wasn't included in the infrastructure project was the actual purchasing of the wireless access points and the cameras themselves. So this agreement with uh, Presudio will 
purchase those agree have them install the wireless access points and uh, uh, for a, I think a total amount was forty nine thousand one hundred seventy four dollars and forty three cents and then that that work will be done by Presidio after our infrastructure project is completed right thank you um, any questions or comments from commissioners on this resolution i've got just a quick question so it's basically hardware purchase yeah i'm, I'm also joined this evening with by the it department so i think they're more familiar with the actual contract and the the quote so maybe rob can help me answer that one Is okay if I answer up here or yeah. well we need we need the mics to pick you up Hi, Rob Kunk again, Senior Network Administrator for ITS. Uh, but this is to explicitly cover the cost of labor to install the cameras and the hardware themselves for the park. So I guess that, that wasn't included in the original quotes? Not to my knowledge, no. Any other questions or comments? Question, question real quick is given the fact that we don't have any of the development going on, I think, do we still have a, our construction camera working? The co yeah, the construction camera's out there today. It's still working. Okay. And it will work all the way through the, the construction project. The end of the yep. project. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we need to go ahead and get this done now, or is this something that as we move forward, is this for security purposes at the present moment, or are we looking at something that we're needing it to be installed? Because from a time frame standpoint, uh, yeah, we're going to be working on Hopewell for a while. Yes. So this is for this is the end game of the project. This mm -hmm. is to support security of the park, monitoring of it, as well as providing free public Wi-Fi to the residents who are going to be occupying that park. Right. And given that we don't have any other activity in regards to when will we when we're opening this, this is just a, a situation from a safety standpoint. Correct. More than anything, because the, this public area. Uh, potentially could be opened prior to other development occurring in that area. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're looking from a time frame standpoint? So we need this put into our package now in order to ensure public safety long term. Correct. Yes. So now these particular feeds on these park cameras and such, is this police station? Is this open web? This is going to be accessible on the city's um, existing camera infrastructure server. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has a PIR or public request, they can put it in and we can provide whatever whatever video is captured during that time. Okay. And then from a public Wi-Fi standpoint, is is there intent to have this occup or up and operational prior to other development occurring? So the park is utilized as a public Wi-Fi spot? Or will that be installed at the present moment and then turned on at a later date? I am unsure with the specifics of the timeline of the project. This is something that, pending we get the cabling, the electrical, and everything alongside it, mm -hmm. it could come up separately from other areas and other portions of the project. Okay. So this needs to be coordinated with our existing infrastructure project in order to make sure that everything is handed off complete without, because if we wait, at this particular point, we're going to have a system that may not coincide with the finish of Correct. the yes. infrastructure project to hold. Uh, if I can ask one silly question, how to get missed? <laughs> What's that? How to get missed in the consolidated TIF or in the consolidated cost? Uh, in the beginning, from yes. when they're putting the, yeah, I'm, I don't have an answer for you. Those individuals are gone. We just realized that they were not, they are not in the current infrastructure contract. Okay. Is this part of what comes out from a contingency standpoint then? That's maybe a question for Deb. You mean in terms of funding? Oh. I'm sorry, question. Yeah. yeah. To my knowledge, I don't think there are any contingencies that were built in. Uh, you may recall we had that conversation even last year, and the determination was that there would be no contingencies put in um, to those projects. So this is just an added cost that got unforeseen. It's unforeseen at the present moment, but it's necessary to ensure compatibility with the infrastructure that is put in and the public safety that needs to be put forth. Statement or question? <laughs> <laughs> yes, to my knowledge. Yes. yes. Okay. So, and, we, and from a time frame standpoint, 
your what is our time frame? Because I'm assuming this went out either in public situation or from a negotiated standpoint based on existing infrastructure. Timeline becomes difficult to answer because there's there's moving pieces before that need to go in place. Mm -hmm. But I would say, uh, Roy, would you say this is something that would be slated to open? The park is slated to be open to a whole. Yeah. So our completion date still remains the same towards the end of this in this fall. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we will be open with the public for the park itself. It'll be welcome to the public, but the development, I think, is not slated to begin till later. Okay. So there is going to be a span there where the develop we're waiting on the development. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, Rob. Of course. Thank you. If we don't have any more questions or comments from commissioners, uh, is there any comments from the public, either online or in person? Not seeing any, I'll entertain a motion, please, for resolution 2455. I will make a motion to approve it, hesitantly, that it's, you know, not wasn't in the budget, but I will make a motion to approve the cost as presented. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do appreciate all your hard work in regards to making sure this is put together complete so it functions when the park is open very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next on our agenda, we have resolution 2457, which is uh, authorizing the issuance of a tax increment revenue refunding bonds for the purpose of providing funds to be applied to pay for the refunding of certain outstanding tax increment revenue bonds of the redevelopment district and other costs and incidental expenses in connection therewith and on account of the issuance of the bond. One of the longer resolution titles, but it's all out there now. And who would like to? Uh, Mr. Allen, would you like to speak to that? Uh, yeah, it's a very poetic title. We have uh, a couple of individuals with us today that I can present to you. We have our financial advisor from Cronin Associates, Buzz Crone, and our legal counsel, Bond Counsel, from uh, Barnes & Thornburg, Hannah Clinton. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Do you want us to go ahead and? Please do. Yeah. Do you want me to do some bullet yeah, points on I'm some of the? Off. Or some good list of questions that Larry sprung on me, but I think we've got all the answers for you here. Uh, but at any rate, we pro Barnes & Thornburg prepares all the offering uh, well, the bond resolutions for both the uh, RDC and the City Council, and they mirror one, one another. And we help provide the uh, parameters for the issuance of the bonds, which I know some of these questions were sort of comparing the old bond with the new bond, and I think we can cover all those too. But uh, the, uh, in terms of uh, parameters, the maximum parameter for uh, issuing bonds uh, is $30 million. Um, the original bonds, there were two series uh, that totaled about $41.4 million back in 2015. They were issued for a term of 25 years the uh, coupon rates coupon rates range between two and five percent. The payment structure is semi-annual interest and annual principal on uh, February first. Well, semi-annual interest August first and February first, and the principal payment due February first. Um, the new bonds will have that same payment. All the TIF bonds have those same payment dates, so uh, that's one of the covenants we have to maintain when we issue additional parity bonds, or in this case, refunding bonds that also have to meet the additional parity bond test. Parity bonds just means priority of payment. They all want to be on the same par. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to have to pay a second mortgage rate on a first mortgage bond. It's not really a mortgage bond, but, you know, you know I'm trying to make that relationship with, with a home second mortgage. It's the same type of thing. So we want to keep the, uh, the parity covenants basically represent 125% of the annual maximum debt service requirement. Um, we actually are considering maybe increasing that on this next deal to 135% since we have excess TIF that, w that may help us get a stronger bond rating and a better interest, interest yield. Uh, that'll be one of the the 
things we'll do sort of right before the bond sales. We'll see what, what impact that has on the rating and the uh, interest rates. But uh, that would make any future bonds, you'd have a little bit higher hurdle to jump over than the 125. I think right now you're probably at you know 180 or 200 percent coverage ratios. Uh, you have one bond issue that is payable solely from the old downtown TIF, and then everything else is payable from the consolidated TIF, which includes the downtown TIF. Um, there are uh, 2017 has 6.4 million dollars outstanding. 2019 has two series. One is 12.8 million outstanding. The other is about a half a million outstanding. Um, so those are the bonds we have to maintain, you know, a parity with on on the new bonds going out. What was the second one? Pardon me. The second one was 2019. It was a A1 and an A2. Um, I can digest the amount. Uh, Twelve. The outstanding amounts right now are on the A1 is 12,845,000 and on the A2, 505,000. Um, one before that, and I didn't catch. 6,415,000. Okay, and on the, the ones we're refinancing, originally, you know, it was 41.435 million. We're refinancing 29,745,000, but we expect to have uh, these issue at a premium or a net premium. So uh, if we were going to go out and issue those today, we would be refunding with fewer bonds than what we're refunding, but because we would, the underwriters are telling us right now that we're in sort of a premium market environment. That way they can put higher coupon rates on the bonds that makes them a little more sizzling when they re-offer those, but uh, people have to pay more than par value to get them. But, uh, but then when they recycle and sell in the secondary market, um, they can play all kinds of games with that. We're, all we care about is what is the true interest cost. And that's where you factor in, you know, all the coupon rates as well as any discount or premium net. And, uh, and right now, the, uh, we have a parameter in the bond ordinance for the uh, true interest cost cannot exceed 4.25%. That would give us minimum savings of uh, about net present value savings of about six hundred thousand. When we started on this, the rates were at we were anticipating a net present value of about one point five million, and uh, then the, so we're not going to sell them at that four and a quarter rate. You know, we're going to try to get our gross savings over a million dollars. Is sort of the mental threshold we have. And those rates go up and down all the time. You know, the what happened in the bond market the last two days has been terrible for your 401k, but interest rates have dropped 30 to 50 basis points on municipal bonds. So people are selling off their stocks, creating more demand for bonds and tax exempt municipal bonds. Um, so we've already seen just in you know the last few days we had the underwriters Robert Baird is the underwriter that's been selected to uh, uh, issue, you know handle this particular deal um, there's two real dominant underwriting firms in Indiana that have big presence here Baird and uh, um, uh, Stiefel used to be city securities then Stiefel and you'll probably see Stiefel involved in some uh, some future deals. I know they're working on the sewer bond refunding we're doing uh, right now, too. So anyhow, um, the, the most true interest cost that we is established as a high end parameter here is 4.25 uh, percent. If they sold today, we would expect the uh, the net interest, the true interest cost to be, and that includes all in issuance costs, net premium discount, and everything of 3.86%. Uh, 
uh, they just ran those numbers this morning. Uh, and uh, that would produce net present value savings of about four and a half percent. At the, that's when you take the net present value of the savings, divide it by the amount of bonds you're refunding, and uh, you get percent of savings. And 2% is sort of the minimum that you want to consider. That's where that four and a quarter comes in. But we're hoping that it's, you know, closer to this four and a half percent or maybe five percent savings uh, when we like I say when we first started this rates had come down a little bit and that was sort of the the target at the time this ball got rolling now if rates aren't good we won't sell the bonds you know that's the bottom line uh, we'll uh, uh, but at today's rates the gross savings would be about 1.67 million and the net present value savings about 1.26 million. So today would be, you know, compared to the last couple of years, today would be an excellent day. <laughs> but hopefully they'll keep coming this way, you know, but they'll bounce around by, by having all these pre-approvals in place. It allows us to, you know, pick a date and time to have the sale that's at our best benefit, you know, rather than scheduling a, a specific day to hold, hold the sale. And, uh, you know, this, this gives us better flexibility to time, time the market better for the bond sale. So that's sort of in a nutshell, um, you know, what the financial parameters of this uh, take into account. Um, I've got some answers to the list. Should I go over that real quick while I'm on a roll here? And then I'll turn it over to Hannah here. Um, the original amount of, I, I think I already covered that, were two series at total 41.435 million, issued in 2015, payable over 25 years. So we're keeping the same payment structure. We're not going to uh, extend the payments beyond uh, February 1st of 2040. That'll stay the same. The coupon rates back then were two to five percent. Again, the payment dates are semi-annual. Those will be the same. Um, the uh, uh, issuance costs um, from the 2015 deal were amounted to about $170,000, and they had about $124,000 discount. But there was also some premium in there that offset some of the discounts, so the underwriting costs sort of get buried in that premium discount uh, range. But it all boils down to the true interest costs that we're comparing here. The new bonds, again, the maximum amount's 30 million. We expect that'll probably be... You want us to go through this, or can we ask questions we don't? Yeah, no, go ahead, please. Just when we go off of... Uh that what you just said can you kind of define that or state that one more time because i was not following the way you were putting okay that. <laughs> with respect to the old bonds yeah okay the la the cost of you know paying off the bonds etc okay the cost of yeah. paying off the bonds uh -huh. um you know will be the 29 745 that's what has to be covered okay that's where but, i was but uh, we expect to actually ish issue fewer bonds than that because if it's issued at a premium, they pay a higher price than the, than the maturity value, and then they get a little higher coupon rate. Uh, so that's why the true interest cost is much more important than just looking at the coupon rate. Um, but regardless, those premiums, need to be recovered by the bond purchasers before the call dates. You know, so by hitting this call date, you know, those people are sort of made whole on the premiums that they bid back in 2015. And we'll have the same issue here with, uh, and that's one of the factors that will adjust as we get closer to the sale date would be what, when are they redeemable for early redemption? and. The minimum time would be five years on the refunding bonds. So it'd be 
one one of uh, 2035 basically uh, for bonds maturing you know in uh, one one twenty or 36 I'm sorry okay no I'm sorry one one thirty I believe is the first We're that's the five-year window for calling bonds early that uh, would mature after that date so the regular payments will go through five years minimum we may set that two years out that's one thing we'll be consulting with the underwriters on to see what's the best you know technique to put as a minimum call date um, so probably five years is the parameter that's in the bond ordinance mm -hmm. we may make it seven years uh, if that helps drive our interest rate down because uh, when they do the premium bonds they may want a little longer window 10 years is customary on an initial issue okay so we're kind of doing this after 10 years you know we're just before the 10 year uh, call date and we can close the bonds 90 days before that um, with the call date it's actually February 1st of 2025 mm -hmm. that's the call date but we can close on that night within 90 days and put that money in escrow to defeat them on the call date so and we could do that as early you know we could have our sale in October as long as we don't close before November 1 we're, that's where we'll be really watching the market you know is it better to do it right before the election or right after the election you know it's kind of going to be the question um, you know there could be a, some correlation there but uh, we'll be we'll be watching the market every day between you know the, the middle of October and the middle of November and hopefully be able to have the sale then and close before the end of the year Technically, we wouldn't have to close until February, you know, closer to the call date on February 1st. So okay. that may be, that may be, uh, like I said, our goal is to try to clean it up before the end of the year, but we have an extra month that we could extend that, uh, uh, that sale. But uh, so hopefully we'll see a calm, low, municipal bond market right around the end of October 1st of November and we'll take Thank advantage of so that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, now the new bond, sorry. Thank you for explaining yeah, that. Then the issuance costs on the refunding bonds are probably going to be about $100,000. Mm -hmm. um, and there may be an additional rating fee of fifteen dollars or $20,000, but the refunding are less cost than the initial offering um, and uh, again we expect premium bonds so even though we've got a 30 million dollar parameter you know we may be able to pay them off with 27.5 or 28 million and then the rest would get absorbed in the coupon rates and uh, we'll have a, a run you know to present before you know we signed off on the bond sale but uh, and the council documents would authorize all that to the city controller which we'll be working closely with uh, after all the enabling ordinances and resolutions are approved and this is just the first step that we're yes. going through in yeah. order to in order to move this forward and, and if rates go way up we just won't do it we know? just we're able now when we look at that from a cost standpoint is that a cost we need to absorb to take care of the yeah you know, but, prior things but prior prior work that's been done potentially but okay. uh, we you know we think there'll be a okay. it'll be a worthwhile but uh, you know there's all it's always a roll into the dice because you never know what's going to happen six months down the line regardless of how the election goes you know um, hopefully we don't have world war three <laughs> yeah so the, the net the net thing we're looking at is setting up an enabling ordinance for it to go to the council in order to re 
restructure a bond so that we can save. We're looking to save a million dollars, and if we're not able to hit the savings that we want from an administration standpoint, then we will not move forward in regards to it. But we're teeing up in order to make sure that the city of Bloomington saves the maximum amount of money on the time on the money they're already owed, and we're not extending out the time. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I'm just Excellent. trying. No, I appreciate you, you bringing through everything through on that. No, I know. I hope I didn't confuse anybody oh. because that is a it, it is not real straightforward. Yeah. But, but no, excellent questions. Okay. Bottom line: say, saving money, same time frame. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bust. And uh, I think if you're yes, I'm sorry. Question. No, you're fine. Uh, all I really have to add, I mean, I think you covered everything pretty well. Um, just the general timeline and steps. So this is the very first step that we're coming to the city for. We'd ask you guys to consider and approve this resolution. If you do, then the next step would be to go to the council, and I think we're eyeballing the, the meeting on the 21st in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, have a resolution before them, sort of authorizing the same. Um, and at that point, that's all the approvals we need from the city. Since this is a refunding, there's slightly fewer steps than there otherwise would be. Um, and like we were just talking about, that just sort of gets everything set and ready to go so that when things are ideal, we, we can, can pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So. so assuming you find the right time to pull the trigger, what's the downside? Why shouldn't we do it? Well, if, if rates go high, you know, where we're not saving at least Two or three percent, you know. I'd like to see us, you know, closer to four, maybe five, you know. But uh, we'll we'll kind of uh, have to make a call then, and we'll be in communication, obviously, with Jessica and the administration. And but outside of the timing, mm -hmm. there really is not a reason not to do this. No, I, I don't think so. Yeah, I think getting it ready to go and being able to jump at the right time is the appropriate thing to is the best thing to do at this point yeah mm. and any other mm. questions yeah. comments from commissioners any yeah. comments oh, I, sorry go ahead I, no 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 i want a real quick question in regards to this was brought up as our controller did her review of the financials and identified yeah and i guess jessica if you don't mind asking, uh, if I ask a question in regards to it, how do you feel about this after reviewing the numbers and what you see as you're just coming into the... Yeah, I feel you know, really good so. about this. I think being aware of the um, opportunity to refund some bonds is, a, is, a, is what we should be doing with our bonds. So okay. I fully support this. Okay, just want to mm -hmm. make sure as we go through these resolutions and such that you know you've reviewed it and you yes. feel comfortable with everything. Yeah, absolutely. We've been in constant communication yeah, we've been with both of these closely groups for quite a while. She's doing a wonderful job. Too. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's no more questions or comments from commissioners, uh, invite question or comments from the public. Anybody online? Anybody in the room? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion, please. I'll move uh, approval of uh, resolutions to resolution 24-57. Second. Having a first and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks Thank so much. Nice to meet everybody. Well, very good to see you. Well, Appreciate it. Right? Exciting. Uh, next in our agenda is resolution 2458, which is an amendment to, to an agreement with JS Held for project management services for the Hopewell site. Uh, who would like to speak to that? Is that you, Deb? I trust Jane's expertise oh, uh, fully, is. so if you'd like me to jump in, I'm happy to. Yeah, well, and Deb's here, so of course we can ask her questions too, but this. Um, is an amendment to the contract just to extend the time period for the initial contract with JS Held. Um, we have approximately $100,000 remaining in the contract, and um, this will extend the work through the end of the year. Um, and I think that's all. It doesn't, I'm happy to take questions, but that's really all there is to it. 
Well, I don't have a question, but I got to make a comment. Um, I've had the uh, pleasure of working with Deb since the CBCI was in place, and we started Hopewell umpteen years ago. Um, and she's been a real pleasure to work with, and I'm glad she's on board. Yeah. And she did not pay me to say that. Well, thank you for saying it. I should have prefaced thank by you. saying she's an amazing cat herder. Um, <laughs> intrepid. Quick question. Yes. No dollar, no dollar extension. No. At this present moment. At this time. And this is just gonna take Deb through or well, take JS held and have Deb Koontz as our contact point mm -hmm. through January one. Mm -hmm. Where do we start looking at after January? You're right. We are actually um, going to be working with Deb on that over the next um, six months and we'll have a strategy in place before then. Okay, because so. if we could get that strategy in place so we're aware because, you know, the, like the items that come up that we're unaware of, right. we'd like to be Yeah, this is your last minute, so we'll have that, um, a strategy or plan in place in advance and we'll come talk to you about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, any other questions or comments from commissioners? If not, I'll invite a comment from the public. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion, please. Move approval of resolution 2458. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. That's resolution 2458. Thank we you. will next our agenda is resolution 2459 which is approval of payment of water meter installation fee for Hopewell East. Hello Roy Aiton with City Engineering Department. Uh, this is our Hopewell East infrastructure project. Uh, the project itself has two water fountains and an irrigation system. Both of them needed hooked up to the city utilities. Uh, this is Fee, this will be a fee of $3,981 to have the three water meters hooked up through the CBU so that we can get water to the sir, water to the uh, area. Thank you. Any questions or comments from commissioners on this? Uh, this is the standard water meter fee that has to be paid by CBU. Did they give us any credit for the previous water meters that we had on site, particularly the laundromat? That was the existing hospital, previous Bloomington Hospital laundromat that would have had an extremely large meter. Did we get any credit for any of those? Or? I don't think this is just a service fee to have the meters hooked up. So I don't believe that. Ah, okay. These the, those fees. I think those meters were also into a different account. I think the hospital account. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we had them in our account. I'd have to check. They were. But this is just the services to get those our new meters hooked up. Yep. Okay. Connection fee. Yeah, and no, so there isn't a credit okay. to answer your question. Drew. Thank you. Yeah. I would just, as we go through with the acquisition of what we acquired from the hospital, did we acquire something that would have been a credit towards our costs? And if it wasn't transferred, it wasn't there. So, Thanks for okay. checking though. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Well, I see that we really have a choice, but um, We'll have a future discussion about how the water fees are going to be paid on an ongoing basis. Right. right. Yeah, just to straighten out on this one, the parks department is picking up the water from from this. All you're doing is for the the redevelopment commission is just paying the service agreement to get them installed. We've already the account set up and the Bloomington Parks Department's gonna pay the fees going forward on these. The actual usage. The actual usage, yeah. I forgot to mention that, sorry. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Is there, given this is a fountain feature and such, we've just got water usage. We don't have wastewater usage on this? No. Okay. I, I think the wastewater, if I recall, that's through the ongoing CBU fees, okay. and that would be through parks if okay. there's any. Um, I don't believe any three. One's an irrigation system, doesn't have wastewater. The other two are fountains, and I don't think fountains could connect the wastewater either. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Um, if there's no further comments or questions from commissioners, I'll ask for comments from the public. Are you had something else? Sorry. One last question. Again, this is just something that got missed in our infrastructure cost. Yeah, I wasn't aware of the cost till till later. It wasn't put yep. in our budgetary yep. for infrastructure. That's correct. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any comments from the public online or in the room? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion, please. Move approval of resolution 2459. Second. Move first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed, motion carries unanimously. Um, and the final item on our agenda tonight is uh, resolution 2461, approval of a second amendment to an agreement with the Weber Group for Trade District Gateway Art. Who would like to speak to that? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think I might have just condensed it in my, uh, yep, sorry, that was me kind of organizing my bookmarks and it got put under 59. Thank you for that, catching that. Um, so I'm sorry. So next on our agenda is resolution 24-60, a first amendment to agreement with you three advisors for an owner's representative consultant services for Hopewell. And who would like to speak to that? I can speak to it. I can. Okay. Yeah, uh, 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 go ahead, Larry. No, they've heard my voice enough. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so much like um, there was, by the way, thank you for extending JSL's contract to the end of the year. Um, we're always pleased to help the city of Bloomington. Um, this is a very similar in that um, there is a request for an extension of time um, to May 1st of 2025 in an effort to continue with the development advisory and really project or owner's rep services as it relates to development with you three advisors. Um, and so there is no change in, in fee. Um, with the pause that happened with development, we're uh, taking everything back up and uh, we just wanna make sure that the time uh, actually references that uh, correctly. So I hate to answer any questions about that, but that's essentially what it is. So. Thank you for that explanation um any questions or comments from commissioners on resolution 24-60 just verifying no additional financial dollars are coming out and then no, not at this time and then what's the i guess we just approved js held through january what's the significant of their them through may 25th is that just a yeah. contractual obligation or does it go to the end of the year what's the timing basis that's a yeah, suspension they, time is that yeah i think so yeah it's really intended, yeah, to, to reflect um, getting through the public offerings um, for the different areas of Hopewell and trying to get to development deals. So that, that's what it aligns with. Okay, thank you. We were using them a lot in 2023, mm -hmm. and then they got suspended, so they're taking that I think they're trying to pick up where their contract kind of left off. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Seeing none, I'll invite comments from the public. I don't see any online or in the room. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion, please, for resolution 24-60. I'll move approval of resolution 24-60. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed, passes unanimously. Uh, and now we are on to resolution 24-61 and um, which is an approval of amendment number two uh, for an agreement with the Weber Group for the Trades District Gateway Art. And it looks like we have Ms. Cooper Smith to talk to that. Yep. You, I'll please. speak to this with um, Larry for the friend that I will phone in for help. But basically, <laughs> uh, last year, the RDC approved $106,500 to um, support the completion of the OT987, which is the new piece of public art that's gonna go into the trades district. That um, original contract was amended um, because there were a variety of drivers that increased costs to $133,642. That was approved with amendment um, resolution 2407. Um, city staff, Holly Warren, approached the BUEA to split that increased funding so there is an additional $33,825 that was approved by the Bloomington Urban Enterprise Association. So um, that happened earlier this month. So in spite of the way the contract is worded, there is not um, going to be a need for the RDC to, to back those funds. They've been approved. Um, but this does also approve um, Karsten, oh, I've lost his last name, Larry. Oh, Carson Thomas um, to or it approves Weber Group to fabricate lighting 
on behalf of the lighting designer, Karsten Thomas. So this document solidifies that arrangement and, and approves it and allows it. Um, and I think that's the gist of it. So we're getting close. With the approval of this contract, we'll be able to kick off the lighting fabrication at the studio in Southern Indiana. Thank you. Any comments or questions from commissioners? No cost to the RDC. BUEA has already picked it up, even though it reflected the contract. So yes. the money, money's dealt with. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so why do we have this resolution? Because the resolution is here because the contract's actually with the RDC. So you hold the contract with the fabricator. And so to approve the change in contract in your signature, it needs to come before the RDC, even though you're not paying it. The, the backup resolution came from the fruit salad of my mind, so my apologies for that. I didn't realize the money had already been uh, approved. Uh, it's one of those things, just anytime there's a potential use of TIF, we want to make sure that that's explicit, even if it is just as backup or remote. Um, that was one of the reasons for including that. But it's before you just because you are a signatory. Okay, so in the third whereas from the bottom, it says staff anticipates that the additional funding will be paid by the and Urban Enterprise Association, and we're kind of a backup plan. And that was because at the time that this was drafted, I was unaware that the BUEA had already approved the funding. And so just in the off chance that it was not approved, I wanted to make sure that we so were covering can we strike that? Yeah. Can, yes. And I, Larry, it's- And then clarify that it's being paid by the BUEA. Yeah. Or could that just be amended in terms of striking the whole thing? And the staff indicates or has no or something that just says that the additional funding will be paid by the BUEA, there you um, go. and there will not, you know. So instead of just yes. strike it from, start with additional, <laughs> and take out the staff staff anticipates, and then that becomes the amendment, and then maybe strike the last clause of but that TIF funding should be approved to the backup source of payment. You can absolutely do that. Okay, so it just kind of puts it out there that it has been approved yeah. and it is committed. We want to make 100% sure BUAA is funding us. Yeah, as is, long as it's already in there and just take out the stuff that the was kind of the hedge and, and before responsible. they approved it since they have approved it. What you said sounded really good. Oh, well, I was just, again, editing in, in person here. Um, Okay, so we have that proposed amendment. Anything else in terms of questions or comments from commissioners? And just to clarify, I wasn't on the RDC. When this art exhibit was chosen, is it all lighting? Is lighting just a part of what is ultimately lighting to be fabricated? It's a major part of it. So it's um, brightly colored. Um, Thanks for indulging me. Uh, That's right, I wasn't. Steel, is it steel coated? I'm sorry, it's late in the day for me, so I don't have all my language. Powder coated steel with lighting integrated. We call it pickup sticks, or I call it pickup sticks because it looks like a giant pickup sticks game okay. mid play. Mm -hmm. And so the lighting is incorporated into the sticks, which are actually powder coated steel. So the lighting is only part of the whole price tag once we. There's more to this price tag than just this the is it. This pro project has been in process since I think okay. uh, 2019. Oh. It was um, part of a major call that Sean Starowitz worked on. The piece was selected, and then during COVID, it ran into a variety of challenges, um, both related to the contractors, and then of course costs have been just driven up exponentially since 2019. So. It has come before the RDC, I think, three times in the last 12 months, probably. And we're now getting really close to the home stretch. We um, are looking forward to an event. So the, the Forge will open in October, and we're hoping to tie a town and gown um, series of events related to OT987 um, along with that Forge opening. So it should be an exciting October for the Trades District. Thank you. Um, just one other quick typo thing that's in the fourth whereas. It should be a total not to exceed amount. It says total not to exceed, so just to clean that up. Um, any other comments or questions from commissioners? Seeing none, I'll invite public comment. Seeing none online or in the room, 
I'll entertain a motion um, as amended with typo and edit. Move approval of resolution 2461 as amended. Second. If we have a first and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 None opposed, uh, passes unanimously. And um, that is it for our agenda tonight. Anything else uh, before we close our meeting? Seeing nothing, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to move. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.